Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. God, gold, and glory motivated European nations to explore and create colonies in North America, particularly in the strongly Catholic nations of Spain, Portugal, and France. Religious zeal motivated the rulers to convert the native peoples and sanctify Christian global dominance in the name of Jesus. The Bible is the most significant book in the Western canon. It's also the book upon which the post-antiquity Western civilization was built upon, including the exploring and settlement of North America by European nations. In episodes 36 to 39, we delve into the origins of this immensely important and influential book, which inspired early generations of men and women to cross a perilous ocean with their few belongings, hopes, dreams, and determination. They traveled to the shores of North America for various reasons, including economic opportunity, underemployment in their countries of origin, and a desire to escape political oppression. Although modern North America is now populated by adherents to all of the world's religions, as well as secular atheists and agnostics, one should never underestimate the key role played by the Bible in the early Judeo-Christian foundation and later development of the continent's post-contact period. This episode, we take a break from our regular historical narrative to highlight a few movies, series, programs, documentaries, and books that showcase North American history and refer to topics covered so far in this series. Let's start with a few biblical stories adapted for the big and small screen. Paul, Apostle of Christ, is a 2018 American biblical drama film starring James Faulkner and Jim Caviezel, who portrayed Jesus in the blockbuster 2004 Mel Gibson film, The Passion of the Christ. The Bible is a 2013 television miniseries produced by Roma Downey and primetime hit reality show king Mark Burnett. The Bible, A History, is an excellent seven-episode 2010 documentary. The Twelve Apostles, the first twelve men chosen by Jesus, is a fascinating ten-episode 2003 documentary. And Tomb of Jesus, The Evidence, is an interesting 2002 TV program. Jesus of Nazareth is a 1977 British-Italian epic film and television drama serial directed by Franco Zeffirelli, which dramatizes the birth, life, ministry, crucifixion, and resurrection of the man from Galilee. It stars Robert Powell as Jesus, Ian McShane as Judas, Michael York as John the Baptist, Stacy Keach as Barabbas, Olivia Hussey as the Virgin Mary, and features eight supporting actors who had won or would go on to win Academy Awards. Anne Bancroft, Ernest Borgnine, Laurence Olivier, Christopher Plummer, Anthony Quinn, Rod Steiger, Peter Ustinoff, and the voice of Darth Vader, James Earl Jones. The storyline is a cinematic gospel harmony blending the narratives of all four New Testament accounts. Although the casting was done without regard to historical or ethnographic accuracy, the TV series turned into a massive commercial success and is one of the most widely marketed, critically acclaimed, and best-known productions about Christ's life. And finally, looking on the brighter side of life and biblical movies, Monty Python's hilarious Life of Brian remains one of my favorites. Conquistadors were discussed in several of my recent episodes and are showcased in The Fountain a 2006 American epic magical realism romantic drama film starring Hugh Jackman and Rachel Weisz. Blending elements of fantasy, history, spirituality, and science fiction, the film consists of three storylines involving conquistadors in New Spain, Queen Isabella, the Inquisition, Mayans, and a Mesoamerican pyramid. Production mainly took place on a soundstage in Montreal, Quebec and the director used macro photography to create key visual effects. This movie, however, is unfocused and sometimes confusing, but it has gained a cult following since its release. Many conquistadors were born into the aristocracy known as Hidalgo families, and as such they were members of the Spanish nobility with some education, but without economic resources. Even some members of rich nobility families became soldiers or missionaries, but mostly not the firstborn heirs. 
It was thus the second, third, or fourth sons of nobles or hidalgos that joined. Attracted by the word hidalgo, I blindly watched a film with my family titled Hidalgo, thinking it would feature conquistadors, but instead it was about a Spanish Mustang horse named Hidalgo. We nevertheless enjoyed the flick, and my kids learned that modern horses were first brought to the Americas with the conquistadors, beginning with Columbus, who imported horses from Spain to the West Indies on his second voyage in 1493. Horses came to the mainland with the arrival of Hernán Cortés in 1519. By 1525, Cortés had imported enough horses to create a nucleus of horse breeding in Mexico. The Mustang is a free-roaming horse of the western United States, descended from horses brought to the Americas by the Spanish. In my episode 44, we joined Spanish conquistador Ponce de León on his quest for the Fountain of Youth and exploration of Florida. I recently watched an old biography channel profile of the explorer which was, despite its age, still very good. In episodes 32 and 33, I introduced the founder of the Tudors dynasty, King Henry VII, father of the infamous monarch Henry VIII and grandfather to Gloriana, the Virgin Queen Elizabeth. The Tudors is a must-see historical fiction television series set in 16th century England. Time is compressed in the series, and many events differ from what actually happened in history. But for pure entertainment and spectacle, this drama delivers on multiple levels. For other Tudor representations on screen, check out the excellent 1960s movie Anne of the Thousand Days, starring Canadian actress Geneviève Bugeaud and film icon Richard Burton as King Henry VIII. Also, Kate Blanchett successfully took on the role of Queen Elizabeth in two sumptuous major motion pictures, 1998's Elizabeth and 2007's Elizabeth the Golden Age. The 1986 film Lady Jane, starring a young Helena Bonham Carter as the nine days Queen Jane Grey of the House of Tudor, the great granddaughter of King Henry VII and de facto Queen of England for just over a week in July 1553. The film co-stars Patrick Stewart, just prior to joining the Star Trek franchise. Two other versions of Jane Grey's life are the 1936 black-and-white film Tudor Rose and a recent 2018 docudrama titled England's Forgotten Queen, The Life and Death of Lady Jane Grey. One last word regarding the Tudors. I really enjoyed the excellent 2013 documentary Henry VII, Winter King which turned out to be an hour well spent. And finally, in episode 35, I addressed the many followers of this series that asked me to identify the History of North America opening and closing theme music to each episode. I explained that, as a younger man, I was a professional musician who co-founded a rock group that won an American Idol-type competition in Canada and signed a major record contract. One of the tracks on our debut album was a song I co-wrote and performed called Dangerous Visions. The orchestral prelude to the song has become the opening and closing theme music to the History of North America series. Since telling this story a few months ago, my Patreon members have asked me to post the recording of the complete song for them to hear. Well, ask and ye shall receive. To listen to the full song and gain exclusive access to bonus episodes, ad-free content, and extra materials, Join our growing community on patreon.com slash markvinet. Next time, we travel alongside the first European to lay eyes on one of the huge bodies of water that surrounds North America, the Pacific Ocean. I'm Mark Vinette. Thank you so much for your listenership and support. (laughs) 